Park in 1973, Knott's Berry Farm hosted its first Halloween haunt event. And more than 30, 40 years later, Not Scary Farm is known and respected worldwide as the grandfather of all theme park Halloween events. <laughs> Knott's is the birthplace of sliders, street monsters, shaper cans, and scare zones, drawing thousands of anxious visitors into its swirling fog and iconic ghost town. Please, welcome to the stage members of the design team responsible for Not Scary Farm, scenic designers John Cook and Timothy Gus Gruder. Next, we have the inimitable director of entertainment production, Laura Hahn. And of course, the P.T. Barn of Haunts, and your moderator for the inter and entertainment supervisor for Knots, Jeff Tucker! <laughs> well, hello, anybody out there like Halloween? Yeah. Anybody like Not Scary Farm? I've been walking uh, the halls of uh, Scare Laces yesterday, and it's been so tough because uh, I love all you guys, love talking to you guys, and everybody wants to ask me all these questions, and I say, I can't say anything. I was at lunch just now, I got asked, and I said, I can't say anything. Well, guess what? We can now say things! <laughs> right As we say on the Facebook page, the fog is about to lift. And then it will roll in and will reveal all those little Halloween treats you love so much. Thank you guys for being the best fans in the industry. Are you kidding? It's almost 90 degrees outside and we're talking about cool fall nights full of leaves and scares and screams. So thank you. And let's welcome our panelists. Look at them. Gus Kruger and John Cook, these are the guys responsible for the nightmares. I'm just the guy telling you about them. So we're going to talk about Not Scary Farm 2015 right now. And this is, this is the latest we've ever talked about Scary Farm, right? Normally, like in July, you're like, oh, I know everything. So this is exciting that we get to reveal it. So uh, I have a clicker. Hold on. Okay, they didn't tell me how it works, so who knows. All right, we're going to go ahead. All right, we are the original since 1973. There we are. John Wayne, Carl Horowitz, the Knott family, all the people who were there in the beginning. There's Seymour from the first ever Knott Scary Farm. He hosted scary movies in the uh, Ghoul Time Theater, uh, the John Wayne Theater at that time, right? Yeah. So uh, there we are. There's the first of uh, the hanging right there. Uh, all the history right there in Ghost Town. Oh. There was no buffer. <laughs> it's a live show, folks. Guess what I'm going to reveal first? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're going to dig up Seymour. No! <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're going to talk, we're going to turn it over to Laura Hanneman, who's going to talk about, brand new for this year, Not Spooky Farm! So I know you all like uh, the scary stuff, but all of you, uh, or most of you, have kids now, so <laughs> um, so we have to do something for them, and, and we, we are a family park during the day, so we're trying to spread it out to more than Camp Snoopy this year. So we have um, trick-or-treating in Ghost Town, we'll have a masquerade uh, ball in Boardwalk Ballroom, and it's gonna be like a, a kids' karaoke, or spooky or whatever we call it. <laughs> and, and, um, and we'll have a, a brand new maze at Spooky Hollow in Fiesta Village with a kid. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And you, know, gotta, you guys can't, you can't automatically become Halloween fans. Like, it has to start in, in the younger age, right? So think of this as like Scary Farm Light. Bring the kids, train them, and then bring them to Scary Farm. <laughs> so 
So it's like training wheels. Okay. I'm afraid to hit the next one because I don't know what's coming next. There it is. Every weekend in October, as Laura just said, Ghost Town Main Street Trick or Treating, New Spooky Hollow Maze in Fiesta Village, New Monster Masquerade Ball and Boardwalk, The Monsters Are Coming, Charlie Brown Show, Snoopy's Costume Contest, and Creepy Crawlers. So everything a haunt child could ever want, right? All right, not scary farm roads, September 24th through October 31st, selected nights. All right, we're gonna keep going. I'm, this is terrifying. <laughs> no we have 11 mazes this year. Am I correct in saying more than any in the industry? I got a shrug, come on, John. To bit. We don't know how to count, so. You don't know how to count. <laughs> 11 mazes. Five skeleton key rooms. They're all brand new this year. So if you've experienced the skeleton key rooms in the past, uh, rest assured they're all brand new this year. Uh, Fright Lane with skeleton key room allows you front of the line access for an upcharge and access to the five skeleton key rooms which enhance the storyline of the mazes. So this is for folks who want a little more in depth in their Halloween haunt mazes and uh, it won't detract from the regular guests who don't have skeleton key. They will still have a great time in the maze. This is if you want the whole story, right? This is like buying the Blu-ray of Age of Ultron so that all those extra scenes explain what the heck we just saw. <laughs> Why was Thor in a cave? I don't know, okay. 1,000 monsters. The most of any in the industry lurking in the mess. Show of hands, who's a scary bar monster? We bow to you! The heart and soul of scary farm right there. 1,000 monsters lurking in the mist. Three scare zones. Park wide, nowhere to hide. It used to be there replaced, well, I'll just go here and wait for you. Not anymore. They covered the whole park. There's nowhere to hide. Two shows! I'm not allowed to talk about those yet. I got plenty of other stuff, folks. Hang on. How about the return? This is better than the Republican debate, man. You guys are... Ooh, ah! Let's try it. Go, ooh. Now go, ah! All right, nice. The return of the Scary Farm Pass, that's right, for a special price, and I think we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, unlimited uh, access to all nights of Scary Farm. How many bought a pass last year? How many went all nights? I love it, you freaks. I love it. All right, I'm hoping this next one brings a giant scream, too. Is it here? You can add parking! I'm gonna drop the mic. <laughs> if you have parking already on your not regular season pass, you already have parking. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a TV, but wait, there's more. <laughs> this was the number one question I got last year. How do I think the parking on the back? I'm like, well, they, they listened. They listen! You can add parking to your pass, so I'll see every one of you every night of Scary Farm 2015. Woo! Six of us. All right, well, that's all. <laughs> all right. It's $80 for every night of haunt. Admission all 24 nights, limited quantities. But guess what? Through September 20th, if you're a season pass holder, they're only $70. and they're available today. But ask everybody who tried to get it on their phone last year when I announced it. It doesn't work, there's too many phones in here. So wait till the show is over, go outside the middle of the street and do it, okay. <laughs> Jeff told us to go the middle of the street, okay. First, returning maze 2015. 
Is this, is this a video? Oh. Oh, it just faded out, so it must be. <laughs> Killed your wife. We could have killed you too, but it was more fun to watch you cry like a baby. You gonna hunt down Red Hand Gang to the last man? There's something you don't understand. This is bigger than the Red Hand Gang. There are forces at work here that you'll never... <laughs> like I was saying, there are forces at work that you don't understand. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna need some silver bullets. Ladies and gentlemen, Gus Kruger. Well, hello, Mr. Scare. How are you doing? Yeah, so werewolves. How about that, huh? <laughs> uh, you know, I love gunslingers, and I didn't ever, ever in a million years want to see it turn into some festering old maze that just withered and died. So I'm like, what happens when the gunslinger kills Red Hand Gang? What's next? Well, obviously werewolves are next, right? Naturally. Naturally. So, yeah, man, uh, he's, got a, he's got a big problem on his hands now. You get to go through the same dirty old, dusty, nasty town you've seen before, but now it's overrun by a bunch of dirty old, nasty, dirty werewolves. And uh, I can't wait for everybody to come see it. It's just, uh, it's great to have werewolves back on the farm in an amazing environment because it's been a long, long, long time. And uh, yeah, if you think you've seen Gunslingers, you haven't seen anything yet. All right. Can we go forward here? There we go. Gunslinger's grave of Bloodland Rises continues the story of the Gunslinger. Bloodthirsty werewolves has overrun the crime-stricken town and explored the new Skinwalker's Lair. Woo! You want to explain that? Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, I would explain it, but my gosh, it'd be so much better for people to see it and experience it firsthand. <laughs> yeah! Not scary farm season pass. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you almost said, like, San Dimas High School Football Rules! Yeah. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to go to the next one. Next! Returning bangs. That's a first quiet one. There it goes. Two Fairy. Uh, Daniel Miller couldn't be here. He designed the maze and he himself couldn't find his way out. So, Laura Hanneman's here to talk about Tooth Fairy. Yeah, it's fun to work blind with Daniel Miller. It's all your nightmares about dentists, about Tooth Fairies, all those fantasies that, that your dad told you about putting your tooth under the pillow and getting this money, well, you get a whole lot more. And there's a new uh, skeleton key room just for you. Yeah. I've heard rumor about the new skeleton key room. I cannot wait to see it. It's frightening. I mean, the one thing about this maze that still gets me today is the audio soundtrack. It is like 
thinnest and screaming, and uh, it's, it's terrifying. It's one of our most glorious mazes that we've had in a long time. Yeah, well, listen, anybody who goes in and goes, man, I love the soundtrack, I would be very suspect of that person. <laughs> Alright. Okay, let's go next here. The Tooth Fairy, new skeleton key room, and a new finale! Alright. I see the Tooth Fairy like you've never seen her before. Like you've never seen her before. Alright, we're gonna do it again, Aaron. Right. Next, returning maze. Take it away. We were able to bring larger hordes coming at you, bigger firefights, bigger battles. I gotta read off my list to make sure I get everything going. <laughs> we got um, some new, uh, let's see. Go. Just hold on a mic. Hold on one second. We'll get there. I just want to make sure I'm giving you all the information I can. Let's see. As long as you don't go milk, eggs, bread, okay. <laughs> okay. So what we did, we cut uh, Alpha and Bravo, we had both tracks, we put them all into one track this year. So we can put all of our resources, all of our zombies, all the props, all this new stuff, all into one track to bring the largest, best zombie apocalypse scenario to you guys. Are you my <laughs> All right, the biggest thing we did uh, for Infected this year was we brought in a new weapon system for you. So, uh, do we have any gamers out there? Any hardcore gamers? A couple of you? Well, you're gonna catch up, you're gonna catch a couple of things, um, with these weapons that we weren't able to do last year. We got, uh, some killstreak rewards. So the more zombies you shoot, the more you rank up, the better weapon you get. Um, as far as our interacting with the zombies, um, you will have a light system on front of your gun, and as you get Bit, your lights will go down, and if they get completely taken out, you're gonna have to wait until you find a, re a respawn checkpoint before you can be brought back into the game. And uh, one of my favorite things we were able to do that we, we couldn't do last year is we're able to theme out an entire huge queue line area with uh, to really bring the story to you guys so you're really starting off immersed fully into this experience and uh, there's there's a couple other surprises that will wait till you guys are going through it nice I got to go through infected last year I lost two pounds I was so winded coming out of there <laughs> on that note it's twice as long so that you bring your running shoes it was, it was fantastic. The only thing that actually made me jump, because I was so distracted trying to shoot things that people actually scared me for once. There you go, you scared Laura Hannon. Any infected people in the house? Woo! Alright. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Alright, new high-tech laser guns. Twice as many new challenging missions. More bloodthirsty zombies. Can't ask for more than that. And a respawn checkpoint. That's awesome. It's like a, like a real life video game. That's the plan. All right. All right. Oh, uh, uh, it's going without me. There it goes. First new base. Yeah, baby! 
from the insane imagination of Gus Kruger, the dead of winter. Yeah, let's talk about the dead of winter. What we're going to do is we're going to take everybody to a frozen landscape that's been overrun by an army of undead Viking warriors and a horde of really nasty, gnarly, ravenous beasts who are all working with a very, very evil and angry Snow Queen to subjugate and destroy an entire region of this town, a whole land. It's going to be pretty interesting and pretty cool. We're, uh, we're going to take you, do things that we've never done at Scary Farm. We're going to go, we're not going to be afraid to shy away from bright white, uh, scary thing that, that, sorry guys, I have Bright white's drenched in blood, of course. Of course! It's going to be like crazy high contrast, interactive environments. It's going to be an amazing immersive world like you haven't seen before at Knott's. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what people think of it. I can't wait. I think it looks fantastic from what I've seen, so. I mean, you, your track record is impeccable, so Dead of Winter, everybody, brand new for this year! And that was a, a cameo by uh, Maggie herself under the ice right there. All right, what's next on the roster here? Is there something after this? There we go. Dead of Winter! Escape the icy grasp of the Snow Queen. Army of ravenous, beastly, resurrected Viking warriors. Highly contrasted maze, first of its kind at Notch Ferry Farm, spine-chilling skeleton key room. That's your work cut out for you, man. It's going to be great. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I, I really, really think that people aren't going to know what to expect from this maze, but they're going to leave and they're going to be like, hey, you know what? That was really awesome. And we're going to blow your mind with this thing. Things you've never seen before at Notch. That's what we want. Oh, there you go. Notch Ferry Farm on Facebook. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, right? Is that Instagram? I'm too old for that. Okay. <laughs> when you click my age, they just shut you down. They redirect you to Facebook. Okay. <laughs> so you know it's true. Uh, you will learn more. More of what we have to reveal. August 26th. Is, it, is there a next slide? No, there we go. August 26th at Knox Scary Farm itself at our special Season Pass Holder Preview! Or I will lead the troops in another round of what's coming. There is so much more to reveal for Not Scary Farm 2015, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're just the tip of the iceberg. That's for Gus. Alright, tickets are on sale now at NotScaryFarm.com. Q&A, can we have the lights brought up? We'll take a few questions from the audience. My lovely assistant here has prizes. So if your question is good and I'm the sole judge, you will get a prize. We're not done yet, I wouldn't leave. We're actually not done yet. All right, who's got a question? Right here in the hat, right here. In the, got here early, Donahue style, run up. Hey guys. Uh, I just want to know about uh, the new infected. Is it still going to be, uh, you know, grab a ticket for the time period, or is there a wait line? Or it will still uh, require uh, a ticket, a time. Still reservation. So run, right? That was a good question. Give him a uh, a prize pack. What do you got? We're alternating. We have bags and envelopes. So let's do an envelope first. It's an envelope right here, ma'am. Yes. Um, can you add the skeleton key on at a discount price, or is it the regular price? No, it's, I think it's, a, it's the uh, add-on every night. There's not, an, there's not an option for the whole month. That was a good question. Give her a, give her a bag. We'll alternate. In the back there, right there on the, on the row, you in the back, way in the back, black shirt, arm up, looking around saying, me, yes, you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I just have a question. For about two years, you guys did the Forever More Maze that was modern-day interpretations of Edgar Allan Poe. Is there any chance that in the future you would do another maze based on the works of a horror author, particularly H.P. Lovecraft? Yeah. There's always a possibility, but um, and we, we love him too, so... Um, you never know what the future holds. We've been eyeing some Judy Bloom novels as well. <laughs> Give that man an envelope. Way over here, with the hat on. Is it a hat? Beanie? Yeah, you. Go ahead. 
Here comes the mic. No, Norman, everybody, with the mic. Yes. Wait, start again. I'm gonna rewind. You'll talk, you'll talk, you'll start over. My question is, uh, with all the controversy surrounding around being like uh, the Green Witch and stuff, why did you guys do not decide to change the icon this year? Because she's the Green Witch. Yeah, no, I, the Green Witch does what the Green Witch wants. We didn't hire her, she takes over, so we don't have that. No soup for you. All right, right here, sir. Um, with the uh, new mazes, are you gonna put them replacing other maze locations, or are you going to make a new area for those new mazes? The new maze. The new mazes, are they taking over old areas, or are they in their new areas? Some are, and some aren't. Ooh, some of column A, some of column B. Get this man a bag. Uh, right there, Ghost Town Streets, Jersey. You're representing, so make it a good one. Woo! This question is for Gus. So, what's the creative process like when you're thinking about different concepts for mazes? What's the start point? What's the end point? All right, give that man an envelope. Oh, that's I a like good question. question. Uh, well, the creative process basically first you slam your head against a wall. Uh, <laughs> then, when you wake up, you hope you had a vision. And if you don't, uh, you know, it's just anything and everything. Uh, it's always being open to everything you see and just thinking, wow, I can make this scary like that. Or, you know, you just. Just be open to making anything as horrible as possible. It's sort of like, you know, you think of, if you're in an environment like this, be like, you could take anything and make it into a hideous, twisted environment. Just have a really nasty imagination and lock, think about how people will be in pain and suffering anywhere you go, like at the grocery store, and be like, this is how I kill that guy. And that's how you, uh, that's how you put together rooms and concepts. And, you know, it's just... I'm a psychopath, that's what he's telling <laughs> Yeah, you just, uh... You, first you get on the FBI profiling list, and then, and then you go from there. Just be open to anything, and just... Even if an idea sounds crazy, run with it. Norm, you got one back there? I don't want to make you run up front, so find one in the back. No, I'm not, I, you don't scare me. <laughs> oh, did say, did no! Say, did you say, I, I don't scare you? Uh, I, 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 I have video proof, my friend. <laughs> uh, based on your experience from uh, the infected uh, experience last year, what's one thing you wanted to enhance the most uh, to really benefit the player's experience? Is that just across the board? Are we talking infected? Yeah, yeah anything. Um, well, if you guys went through infected, there's a 95% chance I was hiding in a bush nearby watching you guys, trying to, yes. trying to learn as much as I can to, to bring the best possible experience for trying this coming year. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the things I saw was, was the weapon system. I really wanted to bring it a whole new weapon system, and then um, just the different ways we can bring you guys and incorporate into these crazy zombie hordes. We want, we, I really try to bring zombies coming in from every direction where you're not looking uh, and really amp up our numbers as far as zombies go. And the biggest challenge I give them is to get more people through so more people can see his, his great work, but not to diminish the experience. Let's go to the front, I'm right here in the black and white. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I enjoy everything about the, the Scary Farm and everything, but um, I used to really enjoy the shows, and I noticed there's only two this year. Like the dancers and the tourists and stuff like that. Is there a reason why you're moving away from the shows? or Because it seems like every year it's less and less and less. Not that I'm putting down anything you guys have done this year, but I do miss that part of the, of the, the haunt. Um, just because we uh, want to concentrate our resources and make those shows the best thing we can, and um, we've had two shows for the last couple of years, and I mean, they've been well received, and you know, most people go to mazes, you know what I mean? That's what they go for, and a lot of people go for rides too, which is odd to me, but yeah, you know, we have them. So it's something for everybody. Yeah, all right. Where's Norbat? Where is he at? In the back, there's somebody squeezing your hand. Yes. <laughs> Maybe they just have arthritis, you know. Could be. I wanted to know if the Green Witch, along with the Tricksters, are going to come back to Scare Not Scary Farm. What was that, the Tricksters? The Green Witch um, is always there. I mean, she started this yeah! thing, so she will be there, and I'm sure. Um, what she plans to do, I don't even know yet. That's a good answer. All right, where's Norman? Is he over here? 
he's right in the middle. You keep moving. Uh, let's go right here. This gentleman on the on the on the end around there. On the end. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Uh, for John, you talked about expanding um, capacity and, and the experience. Um, now that there's only one one uh, circuit, does that mean the teams are going to be larger to kind of make up for the last time you can actually have two teams of like 16? No, um, they're the same size. We are being creative of how we're being able to um, insert groups more often. How many people last year, John, I mean, you were in the bushes, yelled, Viva Jenkins! I literally was in the bushes <laughs> every single night. <laughs> Where'd he go? Over here. Dude, how do you do that? Okay, yeah, well, yeah, right there. All right, this is a question for Gus. Uh, while watching your video of the new maze, couldn't help but see some similarities between some certain other franchise princess Frozen movie. <laughs> and, you know, we don't, you don't shy away from making fun of Disney and any, any kind of references in your new maze Kill to her. some princesses that I need to get. <laughs> you know, we actually sort of had a bet on how long that question would take. Use <laughs> <laughs> brother Mortimer only a dollar. I thought it would be like first. Uh, I, I've never seen that film, so I don't even know. <laughs> Listen, um, it's hard to avoid, um, but then again, there's, it's one of those things where, for the longest time, I've wanted to do something that's very, very different, uh, as far as, like, like I said, a high contrast maze, not be afraid to shy away from whites and things like that. Um, and of course, when you think about like that, something like that, yes, of course, snow is a good fit. So you start exploring, you know, what is in pop culture about snow? What are uh, historical things that, that have been seen in snow, what type of things can you bring out of that? So, so yes, of course, you know, Hans Christian Andersen's Snow Queen was a little bit of a, uh, that was the basis for her, and I'm not going to say that I, I don't go, this queen doesn't sing, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but that said, that is just the minor, that is, yes, it's her, her she's the figurehead, she controls everything, but uh, there's there's lots of different fantasy and, and different references and just different historical things uh, that you can glean from snow-based horrors and uh, I've just really run the gamut and it's it's to me it would be remiss to do something in the snow and not have that opportunity to have this really nasty vile figurehead that sort of plays against what is out there is the maze a parody not in the slightest there's no jokes in here you know other than whatever I my weird, dark sense of humor, but it's not a funny ha-ha thing. There's a very real environment with very scary things that are going on, and it just might happen to share a couple similarities to something else that might have been in pop culture. I don't know. There was a... <laughs> it was Kruger, everybody. Thank you. There, there was a little girl under the ice, Gus, with a guy getting beaten to a pulp on top of her. I didn't think it was funny at all. That guy was asking for it. <laughs> he was asking for it. In the back, Norm. So going on that, there's no date on when the musical for the Ice Queen is coming out? <laughs> hey, if you find it, I write it, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that needs to let it go. Who's next? Uh, right there. Um, this one's for like the gore, like the people like gore and the cannibals out there. What happened to the slaughterhouse? What happened to the slaughterhouse? Um, slaughter. Actually, the FDA shut it down. The FDA shut so. it down, that's right. <laughs> well, no, the, the, the actual answer is all mazes have a, a lifespan, and when the lifespan is over, they're retired. And, and honestly, you can see when we do something as massive as the overhaul as we did with Gunslingers, that's a way to refresh things so that we don't get stuck in that rut of, hey, here's Doll Factory for the 11,000th year, or like, Lord of the Vampire, now it's, in, you know, we just, <laughs> we've had things for a while, and we were trying to shake it up and try to offer new and exciting things. And Slaughterhouse is a great thing. Um, it was a cool maze for its time, but it had a long run. Yeah, you know, a long run. And, and when you devote resources to something like that for so long, you want to see something fresh and exciting. And there's this... Go to Tooth Fairy, see the gore. Exactly, yeah. you know. It, it, when you have something so gore-centric, it takes other things, you know, it, it distracts from Well, we, we've always said that Hot Scary Farm has to have a whole gamut of mazes. If we did 11 gory mazes, by the end you'd be so dull to it, it wouldn't have the same effect. In the back, Norm. All right, Mr. Tucker, I have a question for you. Question for me, yes. All right, you did your part with a trap, of course. When is not a dairy farm going to give you the chance to make your own maze? Because yeah. you've so many good You deserve a chance to make your own maze. Uh, 
Listen, I, I appreciate that, but I've seen what these guys go through to actually design a maze. It does not look like fun. They make it look easy, but it is a lot of work, and I've seen them very stressed out with approaching and looming deadlines. Now, the work that Gus and I did last year was a lot of fun, but I always said that I gave ideas and Gus did all the heavy lifting, so it is a lot of work. I mean, you're talking about, imagine if somebody gave you 10 Lego sets and you really liked them and they mixed them all into one barrel and dumped them on the floor and said, you've got an hour. That's what these guys do, so I give it up for them. Where are you, Norm? He's over there. Here we have a young fan who has a question. I have two questions. Um, since I'm 11, would I be able to go on infected? I will personally be your squad leader. Yeah! He used to turn it on on me last week. So. <laughs> What type of guns are in infected? What, what, what kind of kid are you? <laughs> Excuse me, I have a question. Are the 9mm cartridges that you use in, are they carbon based or are they an alloy? Because if they're an alloy, the zombie's head will explode, but a carbon based one will just stick in there and launch, and I can't do a double shot if I don't know the head of God. Can I have my cookies now? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, raising kids right! Yeah. All right, one, we have time for one, a couple more questions, a couple more, hurry. Hello. This one's for Chris. <laughs> okay, so because, yeah, because um, the maze is about winter, is it gonna be AC? Like, is there, it's gonna be gold? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's the other thing you don't know about Knott's Berry Farm. We actually, for Scary Farm, we have the highest electric bill of any haunt in Wayne Park. So yeah, we will be popping all of that money into our AC in Boardwalk Ballroom. Just for that. Gus, Gus will personally give you his jacket when you go through. We have time for one more question right here down in the front. Hi, I have a question. Uh, is Elvira coming back? The question was, is Elvira coming back? Uh, the answer to that question, ladies and gentlemen, is... Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Elvira, the mistress of the bar, Cassandra Peterson herself, live right here on the stage. Knots from, uh, let's see, September 24th all the way through the 31st, and uh, I'm super excited about it. This year we're up in the ante. It's bigger than ever. And I don't know, anybody out here who has seen the show before? <laughs> this year it's really, really, really insane. So anyway, I hope to see you guys out there, and uh, I guess we're going to answer questions. Ladies right? and gentlemen, are there any questions? For the mistress of the dark herself, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Let me tell you, where's Norm? I don't see him. There he is, running down there. There's a question right over there, way up in the air, Norm. Come on, hold that. Stand right there. All right. Hi. <laughs> don't send me Brady. Take a moment. <laughs> breathe, breathe. Okay. Um, last year, I asked you if you could autograph my arm because I would get it tattooed on myself, 
I, I was first in line for you. I just want to know, how do you look so amazing? Wow. Magic. <laughs> if I told you, it wouldn't be magic anymore. All right, where else thank are we going? Thank you for asking. Thank Let's you go for over here. Compliment. Let's go over here. Let's make him run. Run, Norm, run. I would like to know um, if you're going to be able to do an Elvira maze again. An Elvira movie again, did you say? Maze. 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 Oh my god. That was a long time ago when I did an Elvira maze, but you will have to ask uh, these people up here if we're going to do another one. Yeah, that's awesome. How about all year round? <laughs> I, I would prefer an Elvira bounce house, I'm just saying. <laughs> Yes, over here. The man with the Cajun Brigade hat. Thank you. Um, Elvira, you have a massive following at Not Scary Farm. You have so massive following at Not Scary Farm. And when you came back after your uh, hiatus, what were the challenges that you saw um, in trying to really um, reach those expectations of the people who are such huge fans of you? Mm, after my long break, you mean? Uh, what was my expectation? I don't know. Just being able to uh, still walk and move without a wheelchair. <laughs> that was my challenge. No, it was uh, uh, pretty scary actually coming back after not having really performed live for like a dozen years. I think. I think I was gone. I think. Yeah. I, does that add up? I think I was there like 21 years. Then I was off like 12. Yep. And I came back. Jesus, that is a lot of years. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, it was just challenging just trying to remember, um, God, did I even sing a single note or dance at all or do anything? Because I did, uh, contrary to popular belief, get older. <laughs> we, can't, we, don't, we can't tell. We have no idea about that. Thank you. All right, right over here. Hello, Elvira. Oh, where are you, Ed? I'm right here. Right there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's fine. nice to finally talk to you. Thank you. We're so, just having a little conversation here among ourselves. <laughs> So, How's the family? <laughs> Do you enjoy to roam in the fog before and after your shows and mingle with the monsters? I hate to tell you that <laughs> I go in the back way so I'm going to avoid those damn sliding guys. <laughs> I tell you, I've had one too many of those slide up to me in the dark and fog I'm on my way into work and I'm really tired and I'm really like not paying attention. And those suckers come flying out of the fog, and I lose my, you know what. And anyway, uh, I have this new plan where I go around the back of trash dumpsters, and I sneak in the back so they can't find me. So that's, you know, even even uh, even Elvira gets scared sometimes, so, especially if Snoopy comes by. Oh, Snoopy scares the hell out of me. <laughs> All right, we're, we're running out of time, so if you've got a question for any of our panelists. Of course, Elvira, of course, uh, this is your last chance. A couple more questions and we're out. Right over here, Norm, go ahead. Well, uh, Jeff, I saw you yesterday at your booth. Yes? Yeah, so um, to talk about uh, Not Scary Farm, uh, do you guys collaborate with the uh, other haunts, the other Halloween haunts in Cedar Fair Company to bring together your... Oh, in the Cedar Fair Company? Yeah, you can answer. Yeah, that. absolutely. We, we talk very closely with them. Um, we, we try to get uh, everybody on the same page so we can have the same offering everywhere, really. But they have some great ideas in their own uh, right, too. So we kind of steal from each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a good idea can come from anywhere, absolutely. In the back, Norm, for anybody on the panel. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, how do you get your guys' job designing the mazes? <laughs> What type of background do you need, and how do you get a foot in the door? <laughs> you can answer that. Um, actually, I, I came from uh, theatrical production design, and um, theater design really helps. Anything that's 3D uh, or interactive um, design would help graphics, uh, drafting, and things like that. So um, we have to have an understanding of theater and how it interacts, and in, in you know, with people actually walking through it, lighting uh, effects, audio, there's a huge, huge group and there's many facets of design that, you know, you can be a part of, but I would say mostly, you know, theater experience is the best. And uh, 
myself and Gus both started just as monsters scaring there. And we were able to work our way up through the different years. I've been there 10 years, you've been there... More than 10. Yeah, more than 10. <laughs> so you just have that passion to keep following it. And we love this stuff, we live it every day. They were amazing prop people too. Yeah, and you have to have you have to have diligence and dedication because the stuff that they're announcing today started back in November, right? Or even before sometimes. So it's not like you just I got a couple ideas before Sierra Leone get together. No, it's it's a lot of work and it takes a year to get a maze on its feet. So it is no easy task. Norm, where are you? Pick somebody. Absolutely. Here we go. Uh, will uh, Trap be returning? Will Trap be returning? That's a good question for our panel. Well, to be perfectly frank and honest, Trap had a wonderful three-year run, and this year, no, Trap will not be returning. Hey, hey let, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's just take a moment. You think you have anything to add? Just real quick. Just really quickly, mazes come and go, and the, ultimately this year it was a matter of resources that we wanted to dedicate to new and amazing things. And another thing that we could say is that this year, all of our mazes will be free of charge. We won't have an upcharge aside from Skeleton Key, so you will, as a fan, be able to go through every single venue that we offer to you without worrying about that. Yeah, I would like to add to that just a little bit. Um... Just the fact that, you know, like he said, it was an amazing year last year. Uh, we did something innovative, and now we're in, you know, there's a lot of home haunts and, and escape rooms out there that are doing way more than we could possibly or want to do. So, I mean, uh, hats off to them, and I want them to continue, but we wanted to leave on a good note, and uh, we have something, we're, we're being innovative, and we have something else in store for you that'll be much better, which more people will be able to see, too. Yeah, well, the, uh, as a guy who worked on last year's and just uh, was at the ground floor for Trapped, uh, let me just say the groan you guys had, that's the best noise I could ever hear. Because when we started coming up with the idea for Trapped, and I was the guy in the back on this crazy idea, they said, well, no one will ever pay extra for a maze. That's ridiculous. No one will ever pay extra other than the ticket price. And we said, well, they have to pay extra because the line will be four hours long. And the fact that you guys are like, well, we're upset that it's not coming back, that says it all right there. Because three years ago when we started the trap journey, we, we asked you to trust us on a maze that you knew nothing about, that was completely in the dark, that would never be shown videotape-wise, that would never be revealed except audio on the season pass. So the fact that you guys love trap... Uh, the work we did last year, monumental. The people that worked on that maze, the monsters that worked in it, unbelievable. But these guys have got stuff up their sleeve this year that's going to blow you away. It's going to be amazing this year. So, last question, Norm. Get a good one. If it's not a good one, uh, you'll know because I'll ask somebody else for a question. <laughs> Our favorite ride at Knott's is... El Yay! Yeah! Uh, happening because we love the two big pumpkins hit that you had last year. Do you have any more music coming up? I uh, music by specifically music or anything. oh anything. <laughs> I have tons of stuff coming up, and I'm, I'm not kidding. I am not able to talk about it yet because, like today, how they're releasing the fact that I'm doing a show at Knott's. I they have a, a, a press release and all that, and, and uh, all these various things will be coming up in September. So. Can't talk about it, but awesome stuff, I swear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. We love you guys. We fear you and love you at the same time, which is a good relationship. We want to invite you to come down to Not Scary Farm, August 26th, for our Passholder preview. All the information on how to get a ticket will be available on social media. I help run the Facebook page, so it'll be either one of the amazing people in marketing or me talking to you. Uh, if it's a really you know, correct, simple answer that gets to the point and actually helps you, it's marketing. If it's a smart aleck one that has an original help, that's me. So anyways, <laughs> let's hear it for Elvira, the mistress of the bar. <laughs> John Cook, everybody. Gus Kruger, Laura Hanneman, Elvira. <laughs> I'm Jeff Tucker, we'll see you at Mastery Bar on the 26th on the opening night, September 24th.